Today, a little training on PyTest fixtures. Let's uh, set up a new project. CD into it. Poetry add minus D PyTest. The minus D is to add it to the developer requirements, which it actually should already be. And it's pretty recent, so that's good. Let's pull in some code. There's a little car class, so we have something to work with. Let's actually do that in the package. Should be able to run this. Good practice to do it at the outer level. And it does not work. File not found. Because I need to run and also minus M. And now it works. Cool. So first of all, we're going to make a test file. I'm currently still sitting in that deeper level. So I have to go one up. There's a test directory already made by poetry and going to call it test cars. Any test underscore modules as well as test underscore functions will be auto detected by PyTest. And to quickly see if PyTest is runnable, I will just to quickly test something. Search true. And let's quickly validate that PyTest is actually working with poetry. I can do poetry run PyTest. And that works. Actually, there was a test already. This was just testing the version. So we don't need, really need that for now. We're going to work in test cars. So to test a car, I can instantiate a car. Here we have one. Another trick is to usually, at this point, I drop into the debugger to be able to inspect objects. So I'm going to get rid of this. Car's not defined. I have some auto checking in my Vim. So we're going to from, and we need to reference the full package. So again, that's PyTest fixtures, cars, import, car. And I'm in the test. So I can kind of inspect car and I can write my test right here. It should be, if I call a stir on the car, it should be this string. So I can port that back, exit out and do an assert. And this is the most basic test. Problem is, if I'm now going to test something else, so here's the test car stir. And now, for example, I want to test two cars, car one and two, car and car two, and then kind of test car two greater than car. Can uh, filter my pi test with minus K on a regular expression and now it should only invoke that test this is true it's also true so I can make that assertion that car 2 is actually greater than car that's the assertion assert car 2 greater than and that should run. Let's run the whole thing. Two test passing. So here there's some duplication. And as you know from any software best practices, duplication is the root of all evil. So we're going to abstract this out in some setup code, AKA fixtures. So at the very basic level, 
need to import PyTest and call it fixture decorator. And then we can call the fixture anything. I'm just going to make a car and return it. So now we have a car fixture and we can now use that in the test by passing it around. And this then, this duplicated line I can delete and I can make another fixture for another car. So just copy that over, call this car two, return that. And then here we also need car two. And we're still green, but we have deduplicated code, reusable code. By default, fixtures have a scope level of function. And to show you that, I'm going to print made a car. This should be invoked in both tests. If we run PyTest without anything, it swallows the standard out. So I need the minus S to not do that. And effectively, I see made a car twice. Now, this is kind of an object I'm not mutating. So we could actually do this once for the module. So if there's a whole test suite with various modules, you could do this for this module only, or you can do it session wide. So once for the whole PyTest session, as long as I'm not mutating this, this could be a safe bet. I'm going to do that here as well. So now these cars are made once. Uh, you don't want to do this if you're going to change something in the car class, because then your tests are not going to be independent anymore. So be careful there. But now we should see that print, which I deleted, only once. Because the car is made only once for the whole PyTest session. So that's scoping. The other thing you can do is how to use equals true. And I'm not sure if you then still need to pass it in. So let's actually try that. So how to use true means go run this fixture implicitly. So not even if I'm not calling it, it will, it will be run um, depending on the scope, of course, if it's once or per function, but it's going to be automatically be invoked. And that fails because I still need to pass in the car. So don't use that that often, but it's good to know about this how to use flag. Fixtures can be nested. So if we make, what else can we make? Say we want to make um, a car factory, right? A bunch of cars. Let's call it a pool. We could actually reference these fixtures. And let's just go with car, car two, car, car two, four cars is okay. And now I've got four car objects. Now, lastly, another thing you can do is using the yield. And then after the test is done, it comes back here. And here you can do some cleanup. So let's try that. So we yield the fixture once the test is done. So let's also show that the test is running. It kind of asserted true, whatever. Well, we can say assert length of the pool equals four. And then after that's done, it should come back here. Let's make that a bit more evident. So the test pool ran, but because there was a yield statement in that fixture, we went back into the fixture and then we went into the cleanup lo logic or tear down logic. So if you, this is setup stuff. If you want tear down logic, maybe to 
delete the objects or what typically happens with the database to um, reset the database in its to its initial state then you can come back here and do that in that same fixture i think that's it lastly if your test modules are becoming very fat you can move this into a conf test file which is in a special convention conftest.py of course i need to fix the import i need to fix the other import because we're working with cars and i don't have to import anything this now should get magically detected because by convention if there's a conf test.py with fixtures in it that it should load it in and that still runs all right so that's awesome now my test module is very lean and the fixtures can now live all together in conf test which is better code organization so that's it for the basics for fixtures um, lastly i we do have a very good article on this where we go into probably mostly the same things. So here's a real database example with teardown code, some more evolved code examples. And also here are two projects I used it recently in. So here I made a faker extension and as you see, the fixtures are not here anymore. I put them all in contest. So here we actually set up a cache and a data at session level, as I just showed you, and make a faker object and add the new PyBytes provider class to it, and then pass that around in the tests. Another one is speed reading, still working on it. Again, this is an interesting one because uh, here we actually use SQL Chemy. So here you see setup if it's a database, and here the scope is module for the engine and the session but then the readings and the user stuff is function level. And that's probably because these things get mutated and I want to have a clean slate between the tests so that the test can be run out of order and are in them potent. That's the conf test and then the model tests are here. And they can magically use session and user uh, because they have been defined in the comp test module. So um, take a look at that speed reading and the other project is Pirates Faker under the Pirates open source organization. Hope this is helpful and I'll see you in the next training.